you're neglecting all pride, all wealth, and you're running to your son. And he didn't even repent, and, and he sang as yet. He ran. Now, what does this tell us about our God? He is forgiving. He's so forgiving. He is so loving <coughs> that all we need to do is turn to him. That's it. He is so crazy in love with us that all we need to do is turn. And he'll grab us and he'll embrace us with a love that is unbound, unlimited, so deep our minds can never comprehend it. Could you imagine what's going through this son's mind? I'm not worthy of this. I screwed up. I told you to go die. You're nothing to me. And the son, and the, the father didn't even care. And we know in this story that the father represents God. And I want to tell you guys right now, God is so in love with you guys. He's so in love with us that he was willing to come down and make himself human. Not only human, but to suffer. And not just an, a, an easy death, one of the most difficult deaths we could come up with just to prove to us he wanted us back. That he would pay the price to bring us back. Now, it's not where the story ends. We kind of like to cut it off a little bit there. But then we have a second son, and he wouldn't have it, and they found out they were having a party. Right? He was angry. He's mad. What's going on? But the father pulls him aside and says, to paraphrase, you need to celebrate. You need to get in on this love. You need to bask yourself in this grace that I give out. Because he was dead. The relationship we had was nothing. But now he came back. And it's time to celebrate. So I ask you, the congregation of the First United Methodist Church of Delray, how do we celebrate? How do we get into the love of God and spread that about? Well, I can tell you some stories from this weekend. You guys have a crazy youth group. I want you to know that. <laughs> they decided for 30 hours they're not going to eat because they wanted to raise money. Now, this wasn't money for a youth group event. This wasn't money for something in the church. This is money for kids they don't even know and are never going to know. To feed them. That's pouring out God's love. Another thing that happened this weekend is we have the pastor who decided we're going to have a funeral service for the kids, and we all attended, that died during our famine. These kids, I promise you, are not even remembered. And the pastor took time to say, let us remember these kids and hold a service for them. That's pouring out God's love. Another thing, you guys who stayed overnight to watch the kids so me and Megan could actually sleep and coming for the feast and bringing so much food we didn't know what to do with it. That's pouring out God's love. We're celebrating in it. But I challenge you guys, is that as far as we're going? During our 30 hour famine, we decided to go to Tent City. Well, actually, they don't call it Tent City there. They call it Transitional Park. Because they said to live in a tent and call it Tent City makes it permanent. This is not a permanent spot. We're transitioning to something else. That we're setting goals that we want to move on. We're not just staying here. God wants something more in our lives. And I met this guy named James. And he rocked my world. Let me tell you the story of James. It goes so well with this. James worked for the government. He was a, government, he was a, a military contract. And he lived out in Dallas. And when he got done with that, he moved to New Jersey. And things weren't going well for him then. But he was driving around, picked up one of his friends who apparently had drugs on him. He got pulled over. His friend put all the drugs in his car. They searched. You got drugs. That's, that's a felony. 
So, you can imagine what happened to James after that. Not only that, he would tell us, I got stupid. I tried to rob a bank just for $400. That's it. It wasn't like the whole bank, just so I could pay my rent. He goes, I'm in this place right now because I get welfare, I get a check. So when I go to the homes, they tell me, you can't come here, you have an income. So he's in Tent City, or Transitional Park, I apologize. That's what it's called. What can we do for him? And I'm not saying, let's get him a job, but do we pray for him? And I know we've started to, and we met another guy, his name was Jamaica. He, he, he was the mayor of this place, and he had a glass piece in his foot. And it's infected. They took him to Cooper Hospital. They said, it's got to be amputated. Well, I can't afford that. Well, we can't help you. And we were there, and Joey, the guy talking to us about this, told us, he could, we're rich, he could ask for money. All he asked for is just pray for Jamaica. Just, just pray for him. He told us, don't forget about Jamaica. There's so many needs out there. We talked right here. Every seven seconds, a child dies of hunger or hunger-related diseases. We did our 30-hour famine, but can we do more? Because God's love, as we saw, has no bounds. It's unlimited. Now, we are limited. That's understandable. But that doesn't mean we can't try. There's a point to a breaking point, which I would tell you, don't go past that breaking point. But John Wesley once thought that you need to earn the most you can, save the most you can, and then give the most you can. And I'm not asking for money. I'm asking for time. I'm asking for service. I'm asking for work. The one thing that just amazed me is we went down there and they said, you don't need to come with anything. Just come and fellowship with us. That's all we want. Just come down and fellowship with us. We don't need food. We don't need tents. We don't need any of that. If you don't bring it, it's fine. Just fellowship. <coughs> so, to go back, God's love is so vast, it's so amazing. He will forgive anything, just like this one son. All you have to do is turn to him. And he will grab you and he will embrace you. I know we don't do this often, but if you feel God pulling on your heart because of that, the altar is open to you guys. But for those who say, I'm in that love, I'm caught in, I'm, I'm basked in it, then let us celebrate it and pour it out. And have a love party. I'm going to end you with a quote. And it's kind of a life motto of mine. And I got it from Mother Teresa. And I say it every day. In my mind. So when you're going through the pain. And you say. I don't know how I can love on this person anymore. I don't know what else I can give. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Just remember this quote. Love until it hurts, then love some more.